What's up guys and welcome to a new video. Today's gonna be kind of fun because I'm gonna show you how to do this cool little Instagram transition. First thing I wanna say, sorry I haven't posted in a long time because if you can't tell by my Instagram and stories, I've been busy and I just moved to Texas. My room's not even finished yet, but I can't wait to give you a full room tour because this is gonna be sick. But without further ado, let's jump on into the computer because that's kind of where we gotta start this tutorial. As always on every future tutorial, I give away one free version of my ultimate effects pack. All you have to do is drop a comment and like this video and then I can randomly select you to be a winner. The winner of my last tutorial contest is APS Colombian with the comment, yo, all you have to do is reach out to me on Instagram and I'll send the pack your way. All right, now that we're on the computer, we're gonna start to work with this image right here. The great thing about doing everything within Photoshop is that when we bring it into Premiere, we can actually isolate each individual layer. So any object that we make, we can actually keyframe within Premiere. So be sure to keep that in mind. First things first, we're gonna start with a blank canvas. So go to File, New, and then create a custom canvas to the size that you want. Since I'm doing this on a 4K video, I'm gonna make my width 3840 by 2160 height and make my resolution 300 and then click OK. My background is just gonna stay white. So now that I created this blank canvas, we can start to create our own image. Now keep in mind you can make something custom, but I'm gonna show you quickly how I did my intro video you should create an assets folder with a bunch of stuff that you wanna include. For example, like the Instagram logo, stuff like that. So I know that I wanna drag this picture in, so I'm gonna drag it over here and move it to the left and then click enter on my keyboard. Now what I wanna do is crop out a little bit of this little edge right here. So you can do that multiple ways, but for the way I'm gonna use it is I'm going to select the polygon lasso tool or also click L on your keyboard. I'm gonna click up here in the corner and then I'm gonna drag it down to somewhere where I deem fit. I think that looks good right there and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna keep clicking around and then finish the lasso tool by clicking at the end. Now it selected this area and I want to remove that area. In order to do that right now, I'm gonna right click and select inverse and then I'm gonna go over here making sure my layer is selected and then click the add layer mask button down here. So clicking add layer mask removes everything you didn't select. That's why we had to do the inverse. Now what I wanna do is create a rectangle and now this is not going to be a perfect Photoshop tutorial. If you guys want something like that, like more Photoshop tutorials in the future, just let me know. So all I'm doing is clicking and dragging this rectangle around my subject and I'm getting it to match up this line down here. You'll notice that it instantly covers my picture. So what I wanna do is drag that image below my other image. Now here's a good point. I'm just gonna click enter right now and look over here on my right hand side. I'm starting to get unorganized. So one thing to do to keep organized is to rename your layers. All you have to do is double click on the text in your layer and then you can rename it. So I'm gonna name this left photo and then I'm gonna double click on rectangle one and name this background rect. Clicking on the background rectangle you can notice that up at top we have a fill layer. So clicking on the fill layer you can get a bunch of different colors that you can test out for what you want for your image. You can play around with this. However I like using similar colors so what I'm gonna do is click this little color picker button right here and then I can select pretty much any color I want and over here on the right side you can see that it's grabbing those colors and then all you have to do is click OK and then you can find a color that you like and just keep playing around with it because eventually you're gonna get something that you like. The next step is to create our little Instagram logo and Instagram name. So what I'm gonna do is drag in my Instagram logo into my project and simply just drag this down a little bit and then resize it accordingly. If you hold Alt on your keyboard, it'll resize it based on your position so it won't move it all around like this. And then hit T on your keyboard. Once you hit T, click anywhere and you can start to create a text. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and then type in my Instagram name. Clicking on my Instagram name, I'm gonna hit Control T to move the transform tools and then drag this around to somewhere that I like. Click Control T on my Instagram logo and decrease the size of that a little bit as well. Move that around by holding Shift and my arrow keys to make it jump around. And then I'm gonna hit Control and select my name and the Instagram logo and hit Control T so now I can move this around all together. I'm just gonna get it somewhere in the center 
keep in mind that you hold Alt to drag everything out from the center. Now, if you guys want an advanced Photoshop tutorial, you'll have to let me know in the comments down below and I will get working on that. This is pretty much the basics of what we need for our initial setup. Now, I also want to have photos coming through here, but I will do that later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file, save as, and I'm gonna go to my Instagram motion graphic and then type this like Insta overlay or Insta transition, whatever you want, and then click okay, making sure I save it as a Photoshop file. So now that I'm in Premiere, I'm gonna right click in the project area and then create a new bin and call this Insta overlay. Now that we've created that new bin, let's double click on it and then go to our assets folder where we saved our newly created Insta overlay and drag that Photoshop file into Premiere. One thing you'll notice that as soon as you drag it in, there is an import as and there's a merge all layers button. What we're gonna do is import as individual layers. So what this does when you click okay, it actually creates a separate bin and then it has all of our individual layers. Now keep in mind you can't see these ones because it has a black background. And since our background layer is white, everything is imported separately. You can actually avoid this if you nest these layers together within Photoshop, but that will be a little bit more complicated for what I wanted to do. So all you have to do is start to drag these images down and then start to see what they do. Now, it's just like Photoshop, you have to layer your images again. So I'm gonna put that image on top and then drag my background layer to the bottom and you have our image like so. I'm gonna drag these layers up a little bit more because I know I have to drag in more layers. So knowing that I have the Instagram logo and my text layer, those will not show up because I don't have a background layer yet. So what I'm gonna do is drag my background layer all the way down to the bottom so that fills in that white area. And then I'm gonna drag in the logo next and then also the name so everything is together now keep in mind that since these three bottom layers are all attached to this one right here i'm going to highlight all of them right click and select nest and this is my insta name layer all right so now that we have that nested and we have our top layers now we can start to have some fun and keyframe this stuff so all you have to do is move the position and the scale and anything you want to do. So what I typically do is go to the effects tab and then type in transform and drag on video effects, distort, transform onto any layer that you want to keyframe. And then I will go forward a little bit and then create a keyframe on the position. And let me zoom in and then I'll go to the very beginning and then change the position to somewhere where it's off screen. So then I have this little, it, it punches in, and then you can kind of see like how fast it's happening. So you can drag out your keyframes if you want it to happen slower. The one thing I would recommend doing on every single keyframe is right clicking on your first keyframe, go to temporal interpolation and go to ease out and then right click on your second one, go to temporal interpolation and go to ease in. Now it looks a little bit better, but it's still not the way I want it to, because I want it to punch in really fast. So I'm gonna click the arrow next to position and drag the speed graph to the right. And then on the right handle, I'm gonna drag that to the right as well. So this will make it punch in, like start slow and then fast. So I really like the look of that. And then all you have to do is do this transform effect to your next clip as well. So for example, this background layer right here, I'm gonna start about right there. You can drag these around and cut them as much as you want, pretty much do anything. So we're gonna go to the effects tab, drag on that transform effect. Again, we're gonna go a little bit into the future and then I'm gonna add a keyframe under position, go to the very beginning and I'm gonna drag this one to the right just like so, so it's off screen. Remember, go to temporal interpolation, ease out, and then on the next keyframe, ease in. Let's check the speed on that. So I'm gonna go right there, drag it around a little bit, click the butt down arrow, drag this left keyframe to the right, and then the right keyframe to the right as well. So we can create this graph that you can see that kind of ramps up into our keyframe. So this looks like that. So I actually want this to hit about at the same time. So that's hitting right there. So let's change this graph to end right about there. Yeah, so that looks good just like so. It hits at the same time. One thing I should mention is that on all of these layers, since we use the transform tool, we can actually create some fake motion blur. All you have to do is select on the layer that you wanna create the motion blur, and then under the transform effect, uncheck use composition shutter angle and change your shutter angle to about 150. As you can see our image here on the left just added some 
motion blur. It's so hard to see, but as you can see when it pops in, it creates that nice motion blur. We can do the same thing with our background rectangle layer, and basically any number from zero to 360 will create more or less motion blur. I found that 150 works the best. I like doing this on all of my layers because it actually blends it in with your scene and makes it seem more realistic as you can see right here. And then all we have the keyframe is our text layer. But as you see, since this whole background layer is in there, we don't want that. So we're actually gonna punch that in after the fact. And you can keep this in mind when you're making these assets within Photoshop. So you can make it so that it's in an actual rectangle within your text and not the entire background. So once that punches in right there on that keyframe, I'm actually gonna drag my nested layer to the right so it doesn't even it's not even in the scene until then. And then what I'm gonna do is the exact same thing. Go to the effects tab, drag on transform, and then go a couple frames into the right direction and hit a keyframe on position. Go back to the very beginning and then change the position to something that I want. So I'm gonna drag this to the left and then look at what's going on. So it, it pops out, but again, I'm going to right click on the first keyframe, ease out, right click on the second keyframe and go to ease in. And then I'm gonna hit the down arrow under position and make this speed graph a little bit better. Click on your first keyframe, drag your speed graph to the right. Click on your second keyframe, drag your speed graph to the right as well. Let's see what this all looks like. Cool. So I kind of want this name to pop out a little bit slower, so let's do this. Cool, so it, it like punches in and then it pops out just like so. Now, the only thing that we have to do is actually create our Instagram pictures. So what I'm gonna do is go back into Photoshop and all I'm gonna do is hide my picture layer and we don't need the text layer. We really don't need anything. We just need this background rectangle layer to understand our pictures. So what we can do is start to drag in some of our pictures that we want to use and then resize these and place them up here to a size that we like. And then just try to center it by your eye. So then all you have to do is drag in a couple more pictures and then you will be set. One thing that you're going to notice right away is that when you drag these pictures in, they aren't going to um, fit because there's more than there's more than one picture. So what we have to do is actually increase our canvas size just for this particular file. So what I'm going to do is go to image, canvas size, and then the anchor I'm going to make in the center just because I can have it span out to the side, and I'm going to change the width to anywhere from like probably like 25 inches. So now if you look, we have our entire width that we can fill these pictures up with. So what I'm gonna do is keep adding some pictures and then eventually once you get like five or six pictures, you should have enough. And keep in mind that you can use other pictures to help with your scale. And then I'm just gonna drag these around, making sure my spacing is all right. And I wanna do two more of these pictures. Just like so, drag that out a little bit. And you'll see that our background rectangle layer isn't even shown there, and that's because we don't even need it. If you wanna see what these images will look like on your rectangle, just drag out to the edges, holding Alt, because that'll drag from the center, and you can see what your images look like with your background. But we don't need that background rectangle layer, so we can just hide that. So one thing to keep in mind, since we have all our pictures here, is that we don't want a background at all. So we're also going to unhide our background layer, and then we're going to file, save this as, Insta overlay pictures, because this is our pictures, and then click OK. We're gonna go back into Premiere and then under our Insta overlay bin that we've created to stay organized, we're gonna drag our Insta overlay pictures into Premiere. We're gonna change the import as to merge all layers. So now that once we drag it into Premiere, you'll see that we can drag it over our images and you'll see that once we have it here, our images are just kind of there. Looking at our graphics, we wanna see when we want these images to come in. I kinda want them to start to come in with this uh, blob right here, so I'm gonna drag that to the left, and then we're gonna start to keyframe the transform. So dragging on the transform effect to our Insta Overlay Pictures layer, you can see that we're gonna go to the Effects Controls tab, and I'm gonna drag this to the right a little bit out here, and then click a keyframe at the beginning. I'm gonna scroll a little bit to the right, and then I'm gonna click keyframe to the left like so. As you can also see, we are not beneath our picture layer. So all we have to do is drag our left photo layer up and make sure our Insta overlay layer is below that. 
So clicking on our Insta overlay layer, we can see that our image pops in just like so. And then we wanna to scroll to the end or somewhere on the end, however long we want this to last and make sure our picture layer is still cycling through all of our images just like so and then drag that to the end. So now we can look at our keyframes that we just made and it looks like this. So what I want to do is actually make the second keyframe bezier out a little bit more. So I'm going to right click on the first keyframe, go to ease out, click on the second one, and then I'm gonna go to bezier so it'll smooth out that transition. And then on the final keyframe, I'm gonna go to ease in. So basically what that did is it created a little speed ramp graph so that this will kind of swoop in and then it'll slow down to a gradual carousel just like so. So you can keep messing around with when these pop in. For example, I want this to pop in a little bit earlier. So let's do that. Drag the Insta Overlay Picture layer to the left and then drag our beginning keyframe to the left as well. So yeah, I like what that is looking like and you can keep playing around with this stuff. Our layers pop in and then our Insta layers pop in and it's just a nice little carousel to show you quickly what is going on. Finally, that we made this um, overlay, you're wondering how do you apply this to your videos? Well, you can just click and drag this over any of your videos that you have and then as you'll see, it will simply pop up and overlay the videos. Now it's different process for when you wanna export this. So for example, if you wanna export this and save it for a later date, all you have to do is click I at the beginning of your motion graphic and then O at the end of your motion graphic and then go to File, Export, Media, and change your format to QuickTime and then go down here to Video Codec and also change it to Animation. Once that is selected, you can change your width and height pending your project if you need to. You're going to also click render at maximum depth and then change this to 8. And then you're going to click 8 bits per channel and alpha. And all you have to do is name this and export it somewhere you want and then click on export. So now that we exported that video, we can go to wherever we exported it and drag our overlay into our project and it is one video file with audio if you have audio attached to it. And all you have to do is drag it into your project and it basically removes all that black in the background. Well, hopefully you guys learned something today. And if you did, please let me know down in the comments below. Hit that like button because it really helps out the channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you next time.